Hi, my name is Bronwyn Lundberg, and I just finished taking the machine learning foundations for product managers from Duke University via Coursera. And in the end of course project, we were asked to build a model to predict the electrical energy output at a combined cycle power plant. And we were given 9,568 hourly average ambient environmental readings from the power plant sensors, which we could then download as a CSC file in order to build our model. And I used Excel to do that. So I'm gonna share my screen and show you the project prompt. So one moment. Okay. So you'll see the, uh, the prompt that was taken from Coursera. Um, so in this case, you know, we wanted to predict the energy output at the power plant. So it made sense to use uh, supervised learning as the ML approach, but specifically regression, since we want to predict numerical variables. And in order to use supervised learning, target data is required and the, that of which we had plenty to work from. So the power plant's electrical output is affected by the following features, which are temperature, ambient pressure, relative humidity, and exhaust vacuum. So I was curious to see in this case, if all four features were necessary to train the model, or if we could drop one um, so that, you know, the one that would have like the least impact on the model's prediction of the energy output. So by comparing all the features against the top three features, um, I was curious to see you know, how this would affect the, you know, the predictive accuracy of the models. So it is important to note that if there had been far fewer observations available and many more than four features, like many, many more, like a couple thousand or more, um, then this would have run the risk of overfitting the model. So when considering which algorithm to use for the power plant example that we were given, our options were parametric and non-parametric. And when looking at the data set, which I'll show you here, full data set, and um, down here, I mean, this just goes and goes for almost, you know, 10,000 or yeah, 10,000 uh, rows, um, but in this data set, um, I recognize still the simplicity of the linear relationship given the data ranges between the set of features and the energy output. And in this case, PE um, column E is the energy output. So um, I could tell from this, you know, data set that the form was parametric, a parametric algorithm that we wanted to use. And uh, it also assumes, you know, a known form uh, to model in terms of the relationship between the inputs and the output. So if the behavior of the data per feature set appeared more complex and, you know, less predefined, I would have explored non-parametric algorithms such as trees or random forests. But in this case, it didn't make sense to do that. So of the parametric algorithm options, I decided to use a linear regression approach based on the specific form of the relationship between the independent variables and the dependent variable. Uh, more specifically, I chose the multiple regression model, which is an extension of the basic regression model. And this is because the number of features was more than one, thus multiple in the name. Um, given that there were four predictor variables, you know, or features that had an impact on the electrical energy output variable, PE. So I want to show you my first approach here. Um, start over here at the side. Um, first few columns you'll see is the full data set. And then I split my data into the training set, which was about 85%. Um, of, which is the full data set um, with all the features. And then I left my test set as 15%. So when copying and pasting that first 85%, which is about 8,131 
uh, rows of data um, that I copied and pasted and I color coded it in blue so I could make sure that I separated it out from the test set, which is the remaining 15% so that there wasn't any, um, you know, overlap and, and thus, you know, <laughs> ruining the model basically by, by doing that. Um, so we kept these separate. Um, and over here, I'll keep going in my model, you'll see the summary output. Um, after generating the regression summary output that you see here and looking at it, I saw that ambient pressure, which is AP, had the smallest coefficient of 0 0.064 and also the smallest T statistic over here. And so relative to the other variables, um, this really suggested that it had the least effect on the dependent variable, which is PE or net hourly electrical energy output. So therefore, for the second model that I mentioned, I decided to drop AP as the feature so that the next model, um, approach number two, would have only the top three most you know, effective variables in terms of what, what affected the, the outcome. So um, that is how I approached that. Um, so here is approach number two. You'll see that it's a still a full data set, same training set of 85% of the top, you have a top 85%, and then the 15% for the test set. And this is the verification where first what I did is I made sure that the correlation here of the multiple um, multiple R and R squared were the same. Um, and that means that you know I, I set up the equations correctly. Um, so, whoops, there we go. So in, in approach two here, you'll see that um, of my features, AP is missing because that was the one that I determined had the least effect potentially on the outcome. So here's my model comparison. You'll see model A, the multiple linear regression with all the features versus model B, multiple linear regression with the top three, you know, impactful quote unquote features here. So um, in this case, the scatter plots are pretty similar, um, but they're not quite the same. Um, and I also wanna call out that my success metric in this case that I was looking for is mean squared error. And I chose this because we're concerned about the accuracy at an energy, you know, at a power plant, you know, the, the accuracy of your energy output is really important. Um, and so it's in our best interest to penalize large errors in the data. And therefore I chose mean squared error as, as this number. And you'll see here that in model A, the predicted PE um, and over here, the actual PE mean squared errors. Um, the MSC for the, the total MSC for the model A was 21.05. And then for model B, MSC was 21.11. So for the results, model A has a lower MSC mean squared error than model B, which is the 21.05 versus 21.11 which suggests that model A would be more accurate in terms of predicting the electrical energy output. So in conclusion for this project, I utilized the MSC to evaluate the two predictive models for estimating the electrical energy output at the power plant. And in model A, which included all four environmental sensors, which are features, um, we achieved that slightly lower MSC compared to model B, uh, suggesting that model A is the most accurate model due to its comprehensive use of all the features. And if the ratio of features to observations had been higher, as I mentioned earlier, you know, using all the available features might have had the, um, the issue of overfitting, which we want to avoid, um, which would make this approach less desirable. And then in that case, you know, we might go with model B. So moving forward, you know, it would be really important to understand the power plant's strategic objectives to understand if model A can be launched as is, or if further refinement 
to the model's hyperparameters, such as learning rates, should be done in order to lower the MSD score even further prior to launch. Thank you very much.